Hi, my name is Alex, and this is a crash course in English. This video will focus on words like those being shown on the screen now. I've also made a speedrun video where I just say each word for each picture, and we'll link to it in the comments. We'll also stop by some places like a cafe, a park, the beach, and a farm. Before I continue, you might want to grab a notebook and a pen to take some notes. I've got a pencil if you prefer. If you have a laptop, tablet, smartphone, or a smartwatch, I can see about getting a cable or an adapter, and we can plug it into a power outlet to get it fully charged. There's an air conditioner that can be turned on if you're too hot or cold. There's a toilet down the hallway. I can wait if you need to go. Next, we'll duck into the kitchen and grab some snacks and drinks. Before we eat, we should go into the bathroom and wash our hands with soap in the sink. There's some towels in there to dry them. If we have an emergency and need to exit, follow me out. Before we go on, if you're thirsty, there are some drinks available. We've got water, milk, and juice in the fridge. I could also get you a tea or a coffee if you want. If you want a snack, I've got some fruit in the kitchen. Let me know if you want an apple, a banana, some grapes, or an orange. If you want something savoury, I could get you a cracker, some biscuits, or some choc chip cookies. If you have more of a sweet tooth, there's candy. I've also got a block of chocolate too. Just bear with me a minute or three, as this might get a little boring. I've tried to condense it as much as possible, and trust me, it's essential if you're looking to become fluent with English. Don't worry about trying to learn everything in this section here the first time through, though. English is made up of 26 letters. These are A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. They can also be written in uppercase. The letters are pronounced the same as to whether they're written uppercase or lowercase, so I won't repeat them. Counting is done using 10 digits. These are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. After that, it goes 10, 11, and 12. I won't keep counting here, as I've got another video where I count up to 100. I'll put a link in the comments. 11 to 19 make it slightly more complicated, but once you can count to 20, it should get easier from there. There are also a few symbols you'll see like period, comma, dollar sign, dash, and quotation marks. In a sentence, a comma is used to indicate a pause. It's also an optional separator for numbers to improve readability. For example, it's much easier to read 6,798,431 then 6, 7, 9, 8, 5, 4, 3, 1, and... A period is used in numbers to represent parts of numbers. For example, 0 0.5 is half, 0 0.25 is a quarter, 0 0.1 is a tenth. 
now with that done, let's have a look around the house. We'll start in the lounge room. In here, there's a bookcase if you want to grab a book to read. You might want to sit on a chair by the table or relax on the sofa. This is the kitchen. We use the tap to get some water. We usually have a jug of it in the fridge. The fridge, a word short for refrigerator, keeps things cold. There's also a freezer below it, and some foods have to be stored at colder temperatures. We also have a fan to move air around if it gets a little hot. It's more efficient than the air conditioner, and I prefer to use it if it's not too hot. There's also a dustbin to put some waste in. This is a nursery, a room specifically for a baby or young child. This is a bedroom. There's a closet in the bedroom where some clothes and accessories are stored. Outside, we have a garden. Out the back is a shed. We have a dog, Bruno. He has a doghouse with his name written above the entrance. We also have a cat. Her name is Spot. She sleeps inside wherever she wants, usually on the sofa. Tomorrow, we'll be taking care of two of our neighbor's cats too. When there's more than one cat, the group is called cats. They've known each other for a long time and are good friends. There's also a goldfish. With the cats, we make sure to keep the lid on the fish bowl when we're not beside it. We'll head out soon, so let's have a look at the weather so we're dressed appropriately. If we look outside, we can see if the sun is shining, if there are any clouds in the sky, whether there is any rain, or if it's very windy. There could be a storm on its way, and we might see a lightning bolt, but when it passes, we should see a rainbow. It could be cold, and maybe there's snow. With enough snow, it might be so cold that things become frozen. It could be hot, and we'd want to make sure we have a lot to drink and wear a hat. There could be fog outside, which limits how far we can see. If something unexpected happens, we might need some help. There might be a fire, and we should call the fire brigade. Firefighters will rush to a fire in a fire engine to put it out. Buildings have a system to alert people if there is a fire. Some buildings have a fireplace, which makes having a fire safer. If someone gets seriously injured, they might need to call the paramedics and go to a hospital in an ambulance. Once there, the injured person would get seen by a doctor to see what is wrong. The doctors might discuss the issue with other doctors. The doctors might prescribe medication, and the person might have to take a pill. A nurse might also look at the issue and treat the injury. Someone who was injured might need a wheelchair to move if they can't walk. For smaller injuries, like if they are sore or have an ache, they might just need something from a first aid kit to wrap the injured area in a bandage and some pain relief like aspirin. Someone ill might feel unwell for a few days. Another way to say it is that they feel sick. They might use a thermometer to find out they have an increased temperature, so they should stay home and rest in bed for a few days. If we run into pirates or monsters, we should call the police. We should also call them if they need to rescue someone. Whatever the weather, we want to put on the best clothing to be comfortable. Commonly worn clothing is a t-shirt and shorts, or a pair of pants. The shorts or pants might have a pocket to store some things in. Jeans are a durable type of pants to wear, and they're made of denim. To help stop shorts or pants from falling down, you might also want to wear a belt. 
A skirt is another option to cover the lower part of the body, and a dress is a single item of clothing covering the upper and lower parts of the body. On your feet, you'll likely put socks on first, before putting on some shoes. If you're doing something like hiking, you might want to wear boots. If it's cold, you might also want to wear a jacket. A coat is a longer style of jacket, which extends lower than the waist. If you're staying indoors, a pair of sheepskin boots might help you feel warm and cosy. If it's raining, you might want to wear a raincoat. If it's sunny, you might want to wear a hat. If you're going to the beach, you might want to wear a swimsuit. Underwear is a layer of clothing worn underneath the other layers. Once we've put on whatever clothes, we might want to add some accessories like a necklace. This charm on some string can also be worn around the neck. A cap is a name for a specific type of hat. And a beanie can be worn on your head if you're somewhere cold. If you are feeling cold, you might also want to wear a pair of gloves. A scarf can help you stay warm by stopping heat leaving from your neck. A ring is something people put on their fingers. People also put on nail polish on their finger and toenails. And they use perfume to smell nice too. If it's sunny outside, you might want a pair of sunglasses. But if it's raining, you might want to carry an umbrella. Men usually carry their cards and cash in a wallet, while women typically use a purse. Ladies might also carry some items in a handbag. A laptop or tablet might be carried in a briefcase, and a suitcase is larger and might carry a change of clothes. Now we're dressed, let's go for a walk. We might have a baby with us. If we do, we'll be sure to bring a baby bottle. We'll mix some baby formula with water and put it into the bottle so the baby will have something to drink. We might also want to bring a toy with us to help keep it entertained. We might want to drink ourselves and need a flask to store it in. If we were going out, we should pack some identification like a driver's license or passport. If it's sunny, we'll want to bring some sun cream. If it could get dark, we might want to bring a torch. We might want a bag to carry it in, or if you prefer to have your hands free, a backpack would be better. Before we go, here are some gestures and their meanings. A thumbs up means yes. This is a gesture for OK, which isn't used as often, but means yes or you're happy. A thumbs down means no. People can also nod their head backwards and forwards for yes, or shake their head side to side for no. Let's close the window and head to the door. We'll pull it shut and close it with a lock. I'll make sure the key is kept in a safe space. A combination lock is special in that it doesn't need a key to be opened and closed. There's a doormat at the front of the house, so we can scrape our shoes on it in case they've gotten dirty, so that we don't bring the dirt inside. We'll go for a short walk down the street. We should find a post box where people can drop off letters for the postal service to deliver. We might also find a street library where people can borrow or exchange books. If you see a pedestrian crossing, that would be a safe spot to cross. Just make sure there's no traffic or it stops before walking across. We might take a car and travel along a road. We'd see some road signs to warn drivers of hazards like wildlife. We'd go through some intersections like a roundabout. We'd drive through some traffic lights where we would have to stop when it shows a red light. An arrow points toward things. The arrow on the walkway is showing the person has to walk forward. This road sign tells cars they have to turn left, and this one tells them they have to turn right. 
sometimes it's easy to get from one place to another if there's a path. The path might have a sign on it to tell us something important. There could also be a signpost with directions to different places. If we got lost, we might have to stop for a bit. We could check a map if we had one, or ask someone to point us in the right direction. Or we could get directions from our smartphone. We might have to go up or down and use some stairs. Moving stairs are called an escalator. We might see a cyclist, which is a name for someone riding a bicycle. Some areas of the city have a ban on cyclists riding bikes in them. We might even stop by a lookout, which is a good place to see a lot of things. We've stopped by a cafe and can get something to eat or drink. They have a menu behind the counter with things they serve. The items also have a sign with the name of them beside them. They make pretty good coffee and can serve tea too. You can get milk added to your drink. They top the coffee with chocolate powder to make them a little sweeter. They also add marshmallows to their hot chocolate. They serve the hot drinks in a cup. When people order a large drink, they serve those in a mug. If you aren't that thirsty, you could get half a glass of milk. And if that's too much, a quarter is a half of a half. They can serve you water in a glass and also sell it in a bottle if you're in a hurry and have to drink on the go. Soft drinks are sold in a can. They make their own lemonade too, which is pretty good. And if you want drinks extra cold, they can add ice to it. And if you want an iced coffee, they use one big ice cube in the glass and then add the coffee to it. We should stop and have a bite to eat. They have a lot of gourmet food. If you were staying for lunch, you could have a sandwich. Hot dogs are another option. They have pancakes, but they're usually more something I'd eat for breakfast. They also have pie. They sell whole pies, but can also sell them to people by the slice. The salad is also a good light filling meal. They also sell chips. They come with a side of sauce. If you're not sure which one you'd like, they can bring out lots of different ones. For dessert, we can get a slice of cake. A muffin is like a small cake, but I recommend trying a lamington. It's like a cake but completely covered in a chocolate sauce, and then dipped in coconut. Each seat has a red napkin under the cutlery, so we can wipe our faces clean with them when we're done. Tables also have a salt and pepper, so people can add them to their food to their own taste. While we wait for the food to be brought out, let's have a look around. There's someone reading a newspaper on the next table over. There's a couple doing a crossword. One of the staff members is cleaning up the tables from the people that are finished and putting the dirty dishes in a basket. They won't run out as there's lots of clean cups behind the counter. There's also some clean glasses on a shelf behind the coffee machine. A man is outside talking on his phone. Someone else is smoking a cigarette. It was near the end of the day, and the manager is doing a count of how much money is in the till. There's also a notice board for people to leave notes for staff and other customers to read. The staff member gave us the bill. We can pay it using a cart. They'll press some buttons to tell their FBOS terminal how much to charge us. We can also pay with cash, if it's a small purchase. We could also pay with coins. Next we'll head to the park. It's a popular area with a lot of grass. There were some rabbits there. 
the park is a good spot to have a picnic. Occasionally, you'll see a flower in the grass. They have some areas reserved to plant flowers so the people don't walk on them. One of them has a bee, which has landed on it to collect pollen. We saw a bird near some of the flowers, and two birds sitting on a branch. There's also a pond nearby. There are some geese swimming in it. And as we came near, they started flying away. It has some fish in it, and a small island in the middle, where the birds can make a nest away from predators. There was a swan there sitting on some eggs. The park rangers go across and told us that some of the nests have hatchlings in them. There was a duck that is waddling around on our site. It was near a duckling that I think was just learning how to swim. We walked a bit further along and saw a frog on a lily pad. There was another pond nearby, and this one had a lot of fish swimming in it. A third pond had a lady having a picnic with a friend. They looked like they were celebrating and having a party. Due to recent rain, the path ahead had turned to mud, so we went back. We walked back to an area near the car park. A man went running by us. We saw some litter on the path and picked it up and put it in a nearby bin. A lady walked up to us with a camera and asked if she could take our photo. He said yes. A lady was lying back on a bench and having a nap. It looked like she had been busy studying something on her laptop. A bit further along, we saw a lady playing some music on her violin. We came to a playground. It had some swings beside it. Some children were playing a game nearby. I'm not sure what it was. There was a group having a barbecue. The sausages they were cooking smelled very good. We stopped by a shop and bought an ice cream. I also stopped by the toilets and used one of the urinals. In the last area we went through, we saw a person throwing a frisbee for a dog to run after it. There were some people kicking a ball around. One of them had a boombox so they could all listen to some music. They were playing a small game of soccer. There are several sporting complexes by the park. There's the tennis centre, the baseball field, the basketball stadium, the gym for people who like boxing, the swimming centre at the lake. A game of football was running on one of the main fields. The team in blue had called a timeout to discuss what they were going to do in the final minutes. It was important. Of course, if they won that game, they would get a trophy. We'll stop by a supermarket on the way home. A supermarket is like the markets, but it's one big store owned by the same group, instead of a group of individual storeholders. We'll grab a shopping basket to put things in. I need to get some bread. I just need one loaf. Some bacon. Cheese. Rice. Honey. And nuts. I need to do some baking and the recipe requires eggs. So I'll grab some eggs while I'm there. I've also been asked to cook something with prawn in it. So I'll get some prawns too. In the fruit section, you'll be able to find grapes, a lemon, a mango, a strawberry, oranges, a peach, pears. In the vegetable section, you'll be able to get lettuce, onions, a carrot, tomatoes, Pumpkins, potatoes, and peas. If you're not sure exactly how many we need of something, we can grab many, 
or if that's too much, just a few of some things. After we've got everything, we'll head to the checkout to pay. Once that's sorted, we can put everything into a basket to carry home. There are many ways to get from point A to point B. If you're just going a short distance, a bike might be the best option. A motorbike might be able to get you there quicker. A scooter is a good option if you're just travelling around a city. On any bike, you'll want to wear a helmet. You might also want some other protection like elbow pads and wrist pads, or in the case of a motorbike, a leather jacket. For longer distances, driving might be a better choice, and you might want to go in a car. While on the road, you might see some other vehicles like a van, a motorhome, a lorry, or a truck. A ute is a car you'll likely see in Australia. It was designed so a farmer can carry livestock and equipment in the back during the week and go into the city for church on the weekend without having to have two cars. These vehicles stop at service stations to refuel with petrol or diesel. But some plug into an electrical network to charge their batteries. Sometimes vehicles break down and they need to be carried on a tow truck to get fixed. For very long distances, an airplane might be the best option. They take off and land at an airport. A helicopter can be useful in going to remote places, as it can take off and land without an airstrip. A balloon also flies, but it's mainly used for scenic flights. You might be going to a place like an airport where it's expensive to park, so getting a taxi where someone else drives could be a good option. In this case, you'd need to signal the driver for them to stop. You'd then pull the handle on the door, and then get inside. A cab is another name for a taxi. If you're travelling around a city, a bus might be a good option. There might also be streetcars which run frequently. You'll need to go to a train station if you're riding a train. Trains usually run to a timetable, so there might be a clock, or in the case of places with different time zones, many clocks on the wall. You might also have to walk through a turnstile to get to the platform and wait for the train to arrive. You might want to put any luggage on a trolley, so it might be heavy and hard to carry. When it does arrive, there will be a short wait while people will get off, and then you'll be able to board. The subway is a train system which runs underground. A tram is a name for a more compact train system that's common in large cities. If you're travelling by boat, you might end up riding on a ferry. For longer trips of several days, people can travel on a cruise ship. One of the smallest boats is a canoe, and in this case, you would want to wear a life jacket for protection. A school is a place where people go to learn. Based on their level and what they're learning, People are split into groups called a class, which is taught in a classroom. A lesson is a period of learning and might have specific points to be covered. A teacher might only teach certain subjects like biology or woodwork, and students may have many teachers. Young learners' activities might include drawing with crayons using pencils and pens to colour in sections of a page. They also learn numbers and letters. They might also have a story read to them. Older learners will do things like write a letter to someone else. If they make a mistake, they would use an eraser if it was wrote in pencil, or correction fluid if they wrote in a pen. When studying, the students might use a highlighter for important sections of the textbook. Older students will likely use scissors to cut paper. They will also use a ruler to measure the distance and draw straight lines. This can be useful when drawing a diagram. 
Students might also get extra help outside of school from a teacher, and this person is called a tutor. It's now evening time, so we'll see about going out for a meal and eat some food. We might go to a restaurant, but they might need us to make a reservation ahead of time. We could also order takeaway from a place and eat it at home. Some options for dinner are pizza, a hamburger with french fries, enchiladas, ramen, some pasta with a bolognese sauce. There are many other options. Cutlery is the name of things you use to eat a meal, such as a fork, knife, and spoon. Some people prefer to use chopsticks to eat some foods. We might also get a drink. This time it might be something alcoholic, like red wine that's made from grapes, a beer, some spirits, or a bottle of sparkling wine. A little later, it'll be time to go to sleep. Before we do that, you might want to have a shower. There's a shampoo dispenser in there by the tap. You could also have a bath. There's a fresh razor in the top drawer and a hairbrush by the sink. In the bottom drawer, you'll find a hair dryer and there's a power outlet on the wall. There's also a fresh toothbrush and a tube of toothpaste by the sink. There's one last thing you might want to do before going to bed. I'll get out an alarm clock, and you might want to set an alarm on your phone. There's also three pillows at the end of the bed for you to rest your head on. It's morning time, and time to wake up. I've got to go to the bathroom and do some shaving. You should head into the kitchen for breakfast. There is some cereal in the cupboard. There's a jug of milk in the fridge. If you want something hot, you could make some toast and put some jam on it. You can also make some pikelets if you want. I'll be making some waffles and can make extras if you want. For drinks, we have a teapot if you prefer tea and a plunger if you prefer coffee. I have some chores to do before we head out. I've got some areas to clean. I'll also put some clothes in the washing machine. While that's going, I'll do a quick sweep of the floor. When the washing's done, I'll hang them out on the clothesline. Let's head out to the beach. I like visiting the beach. It's nice to walk on the sand and put my feet in the water. I was lucky to spot a starfish in the water. I also noticed a few interesting seashells. Some beaches will have a jetty which goes out over the water. The sea can be dangerous and hard to predict, so some beaches will have a lifeguard who watches out and can rescue any swimmers who need assistance. They might have to use a jet ski if the currents sweep them out far from the shore. They might also have a four-wheel drive, which can travel on the sand without getting bogged. There was a family walking ahead of us. We can look down and see their footprints. They have a dog with them and are playing fetch with it. They would throw the ball and the dog would run and grab it in its teeth and bring it back to them. I got an ice cream. It was a hot day, so it started to melt just after I bought it. The surf was bigger than I'd like, so we'll stop by the baths to see about going for a swim. The baths might be busy, have the same amount of people as usual, be quiet and only have a few people there. It could also be described as vacant or empty. As we left, we stopped by the dock. The tide was out so that the boats were sitting on the sand. It'll come back in a few hours. 
We'll stop out in the countryside. I've got a friend who owns a farm and have to drop off a parcel. They have lots of animals. As we drove in, we saw a horse in the field. They run around the fields during the day and sleep in a stable. There were sheep in another field and a donkey in another. One field had several cows. One cow was walking by the fence. The field also had a bull. They also have a barn where they store feed. The chickens also stay in there overnight. A hen is a female chicken which lays eggs. The male chickens are called roosters. And a baby chicken is called a chick. We went to the house to drop off the parcel and saw a puppy they were breeding. The farmer has several dogs on the farm to do things like round up the sheep. The farmer was busy in the tractor and said thanks for dropping the parcel off, so we left. If you come to Australia, you're likely to see some of our unique wildlife, like a cockatoo, a crocodile, a kangaroo, a king parrot, Tasmanian devil, a water dragon, or some koalas. The kookaburra is known for its distinctive laugh. An echidna has many spikes on its back for defence. If you go to Western Australia, you might see a quokka. A wallaby is similar, but smaller than a kangaroo. And wombats are found in the bush and dig holes to live in burrows. Some names of other animals are a camel, bear, dolphins, an eagle, elephants, fox, a giant panda, a giraffe, a lion. A female lion is called a lioness. A young lion is called a cub, a mouse, an octopus, a pair of otters, an owl, a shark, a snake, a squirrel, a tiger, a tortoise, a tree frog, a turtle, a whale, a wolf, and a zebra. These are the names of some common body parts. Arms, an ear, eyes, feet, the head, legs, knees, a thumb, and toes. Colours are a way to describe something. There might be several cars in a street, and saying that yours is the yellow one might be a way to help it get found quicker. The cat is black. The cup is blue. The horse is brown. The bird is green. The cat is grey. The flower is pink, the lavender is purple, the leaves are red, the dove is white, the wall is orange. Verbs are doing words, some action is happening. The people build the house, the friend is offering assistance, the cowboys chase after the cow. The person will climb the wall. The cars crash to test their safety. I often crush the bottle to make it smaller. The zebras drink from the river. People eat at a restaurant. Please fill the glass with water from the bottle. Grab the coffee from the shelf. 
Let's grind the spices. Soldier stand guard at the doorway. The man is getting a haircut. The lady is helping her friend take a photo. The child decided to hide in the closet. The man would hold on to the strap of the cable car. The couple shared a hug. The man left the subway in a hurry. The team would meet each week to discuss achievements and goals. The office held a party at the end of the year. The man leaned over to pat the dog. The waiter came to pour wine in the glass. The athlete would practice alone to get better. The dog and man would pull on each end of the rope. The man tries to push the hay bale. The student is tired, so took a nap. The lady went on a walking tour of the city. The passenger waits for the gate to open, so he can board the airplane. The pair would often go walking in the wilderness. Many people come and watch the teams play at the stadium. The person is writing a list of things to do next week. The man used a megaphone to yell at people and points at something. Places are where people can go. A building is a common name for a place where people work or live in. Lots of people live in an apartment building. Some of them might also have a gym where people go to exercise in them. The city has a lot of buildings. A castle is a building made to protect people from an attack. An island is a bit of land completely surrounded by water. A cave is a place where pirates might bury hidden treasure. A river is where lots of water flows downhill. A bridge might be made to easily cross a river. Lots of people stop to visit the scenic waterfall. A dam holds water back so it can be used later and maybe generate electricity. A rail yard is a place where trains are parked when they're not being used. A vineyard is a place where grapes grow before they're turned into wine. A zoo is a place with many different animals. The wilderness is a place far away from the city or where people normally live. Nouns are names of things. An axe is used to chop up wood. Binoculars help you see things far away. A box is useful to put things in. Braille is a way of writing for blind people using slightly elevated dots on the paper. We dropped the phone and now the screen is broken. A bucket can be used to carry water around. A calculator can help people do hard calculations correctly. A candle can provide light where there is no electricity. A chainsaw can be used to quickly cut up some wood. A chair is something you sit on. A check is a form of payment that isn't common today. A compass can be used to find the right direction to go. A cot is a bed for a baby. Dad is the name for a male parent. A diary can be used to schedule events and record notes of things that happen. A flag is flying high on the flagpole. A musician is playing a flute. Glasses help correct people's vision so they can see better. A hammer is a tool that can be used to hit nails into wood. The man wears headphones on his way to work to listen to music. A headset is like headphones, but it has a built-in microphone. An hourglass is used to measure time. A jar is used to store foods to keep them fresh. A kitchenette is a smaller kitchen for areas like an office lunchroom. A ladder is used to help people reach things up high. 
A magnifying glass can help people read small text or see fine details. A match is a way to start a fire to light a candle. Mum is the name for a female parent. An organiser is a document or folder containing documents like a diary and a pen. A package is an item that is delivered from one person to another. A padlock can be used with a chain to secure something like a bike to a tree so it isn't stolen. A piano is a musical instrument. A pool is a place where people can go to swim. Radio stations broadcast music and news that people can receive via a radio. Tent is a portable shelter people can carry while walking through the wilderness. Rubbish and litter can be placed in a trash can. Treasure is something valuable like gold coins or jewellery. A trolley can help people move heavy things around. A trumpet is a musical instrument that people play by blowing into it. A windmill was a way for grain to be crushed into flour. Wind turbines are a newer form of windmill, which directly generates electricity. The last section will cover some other words that can be used to describe things. The door was closed. The bridge was opened to let a ship pass. The puppy was so small she fit inside a cup. We started to carve out the big pumpkin. We came back from holiday to find the kitchen was left messy. The band was playing in a parade and being so close it was very loud. The car broke down and we had to walk very far to the next town. The student made a plan for the week, showing when things were to be done. We got a message back from a friend showing they were angry. The runners all lined up ready for the start of the race. Thank you for watching. Hopefully it's been helpful. If you have any questions or feedback, please leave a comment. From here, I recommend you go and do some more reading to expand your vocabulary. Getting a dictionary can also help. It's a book with words in alphabetical order that helps explain what the words mean. This channel has many videos focusing on words and pictures to help people learn new words. I'll put a link into the comments. A good place to visit will be a library, which should have many books as well as other things like DVDs and audiobooks. It should be free or cheap to register and borrow items. One last thing, if you found this video helpful, please consider sharing it with some friends you think it might help. Thank you and good night.